Now joining the show now is former Governor Tommy Thompson. Thanks for coming on the show here. Well, it's my pleasure, and thank you so very much for having me. And as I understand, I'm your last interview before you retire. This is it, my last show here on Capital City Sunday. So I'm thank sad. You I'm being. saddened by that, and I'm happy that I'm your last one. <laughs> well, well wanted, maybe I'll wait till afterwards to say well, whether right, I, no, I wanted to end with a good one, and <laughs> yeah. I knew you'd give it to me here. Now you are a record holder for the most partial vetoes in That's state true. history. So uh, obviously, you know a lot about this. I, I do. First off, talk about the process that they you. They used use. to call me Veto. Uh, Vito Tommy Thompson. Uh huh. So, and what was the process? Did you have a whole team scouring this thing? How did you get so creative with this partial veto? I went in with the idea. Number one, if we're going to do vetoes, they got to end up being good for the taxpayer. Number two, if you're going to do it, you got to make sure that it's workable. Three, it's something that is badly needed by the state of Wisconsin. And four, it's going to be able to be helpful to improve the efficiency of government. So I went in with those four basic tenets uh, before I did any veto. And I told the people in the Department of Administration who review the budget to come up with their ideas and suggestions, and they did. And then I would review them based upon those four principles. And once I did that, then I would decide whether or not I wanted to do it. And the more creative sometimes, uh, it worked out the best. You mentioned creativity. Obviously, it could completely change the whole nature of the bill. Uh, things that maybe weren't meant to be in there are in there. Governor Evers just did it, added a 400-year funding increase. Do you have a problem with being creative like that with this veto? No, I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I was the master of it, so I cannot, I cannot criticize it now. Uh, the Constitution has changed it. You cannot ch change your words by moving one word, uh, one letter to another, another word like I was able to do when the Constitution was changed. I think that was a good constitutional change. Uh, but uh, the governor made a veto that's for 400 years, which is pretty uh, outstanding. Astounding, I guess would be the word. But it's really a pyrrhic victory because there's no money associated with it. So it's really a uh, property tax increase for 400 years because there's no state money after the first two years. So if the legislature doesn't appropriate money, the property taxpayer is going to get stuck, and I think there's going to be a lot of angst over that particular problem. You mentioned the power for partial vetoes has changed over the years. Right. Is it a power that should still exist? Should it be further refined, or should you just leave it as is? No, I think it should be. I really think the President of the United States should do it. Can you imagine those big bills that the President gets, and he doesn't have any item, item vetoes whatsoever. And the President could do so much better if he was able to veto out some of the stuff that's really not good for the taxpayers or for the country. But he uh, has to you know, sign it all or veto it all. And therefore, he signs a lot of stuff that probably should not be brought into law and probably should not be in the Constitution or in the, uh, in the statute books. Uh, whereas in Wisconsin, we can change that. The governor has got the power, and uh, most governors have used it. Every governor that I've known has been able to use it. I probably used it more, as I, as you said, I've got the record. And I used it uh, because the Democrats control both houses. I was the only uh, Republican in power. So if I was going to have a Republican initiative, I needed the item veto in order to accomplish that. Do you smile when you see something like what Governor Evers did then, being creative with it? Or what is your reaction when you see well, that? Well, my reaction was, is how is it going to uh, affect the people of the state of Wisconsin? I always look at the basic thing. Is this going to be good or bad? And it's a pyrrhic victory. It was, uh, it was sort of exciting to see a governor come out with something that that's so imaginative to go out for 400 years when the country's only 247 years old, 400 years. But the truth of the matter is it's a pyrrhic victory, as I said, because there's no money associated with it. And so if you're going to raise that amount of money each year or every two years for schools, somebody's going to have to pay for it, and it's going to be the property taxpayer. And there's going to be a lot of angst out there, as I've said before, on the property taxpayer to pay this increased amount of money. So I think the legislature will be forced to change it in the future. And as, I, as everybody knows, you cannot uh, really guarantee this because the incoming legislature and governor, whoever it's going to be in the future, can change this uh, you know, by introducing a bill. So it's, it's there now. It's sort of cute. It's uh, sort of uh, way out there, uh, but the truth of the matter is it's more of a pyrrhic victory than a real victory for you'd education. Have, 
Yeah, UW System funding was obviously a big talking point here. This budget, you were UW System president very recently. I was. We were kind of painted two very different pictures. From UW System president Jay Rothman talked about they need hundreds of millions of dollars to balance these budgets. First off, did, did you see it that way as far as when you were looking at the books while you were there, that that much money was needed in additional state funding? Well, there's no question that the University of Wisconsin needs more money. There's no question about it. But the truth of the matter is, they have to work uh, and cooperate with the people on the other end of State Street. They're the ones that are the appropriators. They're the ones that are going to tell you whether or not you're going to get the money. And when you look at this budget, the governor cut the university by over $100 million before he introduced his budget. So going in, uh, it's obvious that the university has some problems because uh, the governor and his board of regents they did not always agree, and he already reduced it by $100 million. And then the legislature took another cut, and then the governor vetoed out another $3 million. So the University of Wisconsin has got less money at the end of the budget than before. Now, that's a problem for the university. And the only way you're going to work your way out of that is by going down to the end of State Street and setting down and cooperate and reach an agreement, start talking, instead of using the press as a, a way to, you know, you know, introduce press releases criticizing the other other people on the other end of State Street. That's that's the problem. They're going to have to come together and work things out. And the university's got to come to the conclusion that the Republican legislators want to be heard. They want to be part of it. And they are part of the mix. They're the ones who are going to appropriate the money. So they're going to have to start working things out. Those Republican legislatures, the legislators, though, they only gave you a fraction of what you asked for when you were system president as well. But the, what's but it was, the disconnect there? What, why are Republican leaders not agreeing with maybe the amount of increases that the system? But when I was there, the Republicans came across and gave more money and and put in some money for the engineering school and a lot of things that I asked for. But I still didn't get everything I asked for. You're absolutely correct. And and this uh, and this administration, they got less than what's going in. We at least got more money in the last four years uh, from the legislature for the university. This year it's a net loss, and that's gonna be harmful to the university unless they're able to change it. And they can change it, but they're gonna to have to reach an agreement, and a, you know, accommodation uh, with the legislative leadership. Why do Republicans seem to be at odds with the UW system? Because they don't like uh, the fact that they keep getting criticized and blamed for things, and they don't think the university is doing everything correctly. Uh, you know, they got uh, they got constituents. They have people that uh, have elected them, and they think the University of Wisconsin has gone too far one way, and they need to bring them back to the middle. And the university's got to recognize that they're not the only ones that can make decisions, that the governor can make a decision, and the legislature can make a decision. And it's about time that they recognize that and go down at the end of State Street and sit down and have coffee uh, with the leadership and the other members of, of the legislature and say, how do we get along? How do we make accommodations? And where, where are we going wrong that you do not believe we are? And uh, I think that's necessary if we're going to be able to get the necessary funding uh, for the university. And of course, I'm a big fan of the engineering school. And I still think we can get the engineering school if they really sit down and start talking and appreciating and start cooperating. And I think that's possible. I've talked to both sides, and both sides are willing to do it, but they've got to do it, and they've got to do it instead of just sending the poison uh, <coughs> press releases out, criticizing and, uh, and sort, of, uh, sort of making light of the other side. The other side has got a, got a position, and they've got to be heard. Diversity, equity, and inclusion was obviously one of the big sticking points here in this latest yeah. budget. Obviously, the Republicans said that they thought it was divisive and politicizing campuses yeah. in the UW system. Do you see it that way? You know, you can make an argument for it, but the truth of the matter is the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, has just ruled now affirmative action is unconstitutional, and that's part of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, there has to be now... Do we need 188 positions? I don't know. I don't see any justification from the university at this point in time that 188 positions in diversity, equity, and inclusion is necessary. Maybe it is, but I haven't seen the arguments. I haven't seen the rationale, and that's what needs to be done. You just can't say, we need it, and not say why, and support it with facts and figures, and they haven't been able to do that. And so 
talking, making your argument sound, and putting some, you know, some performance in, you're going to make it go a long way. And the Republicans want performance. And uh, when you look at the number of individuals who are minorities on the campus, it's not very, very successful. And there hasn't been that many that have graduated. And so maybe there's another way to do it. And they need to explore that. And I don't think they're willing to do it yet. Now maybe they will. Former Governor Tommy Thompson, I want to thank you so much for the time here. My pleasure. And good luck on your, on your new future. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.